symphony conductor Leopold Stokowski once said that a painter paints pictures on canvas, but a musician paints their picture on silence. One such musician is the singer, and their instrument is their voice. While many times a singer is accompanied by a piano or guitar or even a full orchestra, they don't really need anything else to perform. They carry their magical gift within themselves. And sometimes when listening to a beautiful singer or chorus, it seems so easy. It almost appears that all singers need to do is open their mouths and the sound pours out. But of course, it's much, much more complicated than that. And it isn't nearly as easy as it looks. Today we'll meet Marcy McGugan, who is currently on tour with the Broadway musical 42nd Street. She's built a successful career as a singer and performer. She knows firsthand about life in the performing arts, and she's experienced how unpredictable that life can be. We asked Marcy whether her family was concerned about her choice to be a professional singer. A lot of times, yeah, the people that are closest to you, sometimes they see the pain, they see the struggle, they see you. My mother would say, they, she'd see me go out for an audition and she'd get more excited than I would. And then when I didn't get it, she was heartbroken and she said, why? Why do you keep trying? It, it hurts too much. And I said, it hurts too much for me not to try. The goal of every performer is, of course, to get a role, a paying job, doing what they love best. And the first hurdle is the audition. These can be frightening after all. At an audition, you are opening yourself up to rejection and disappointment. Even so, some performers can take them in their stride. And there are those who even claim to enjoy them. But as Marcy gets ready for her nightly performance, she explains auditions are not her favorite thing. It's never been something that I really enjoyed or had fun with. I'm not a very competitive person, even when I played sports. I just wanted to have the fun, but I didn't, I didn't have a killer instinct. And I've met other people through the years who are really competitors, so they're very good at it. I get a little nervous, and uh, still to this day, no matter how long I, I um, it can be hard. I, f uh, I find that I have to reverse my psychology so I don't feel it's a test, because tests made me scared. And I try to think of it as a performance, and then I'm okay, because I've always been fine in front of the audience and on the stage. But when you think they're looking at you to pick you, if, if I sh don't shift it into, this is my chance to show them my take on the role, then I'm okay. Marcy talked about something else that often gets overlooked in the quest for a professional singing career, personality. Performers need to be ambitious and willing to promote themselves. The way a performer goes after roles can affect the outcome. Marcy describes it like this. Because there is a business side and a creative side and they have to try and go together and you'll meet people along the way. I've met people in this field that are not the best singer, the best dancer, but they are so strong on their competitive skills of I want that job and they'll go out and they'll meet the producer, they'll meet the director, they're not as shy and they can go very far and then their skills get better because they're getting more opportunities. And then I'll meet somebody who's very talented and has none of the skills of getting out there. It's almost like, and for them, sometimes they don't get out as fast, but when they do get the shot, the, the talent is what takes them. So it's, it's constantly balancing the two sides that can keep you, keep you in the game. There are a lot of jobs in musical theater when you first start out, and the acting world, if it's on the stage, not film, has sort of shrunk down a little bit. So the people that could sing actually got more jobs quicker, real jobs. I always sang, so um, I'm one of the lucky ones. Many people in my class could not sing, and they never, they never got professional work. We discovered that Marcy is not just a singer, but a multi-talented performer. We wondered how valuable it was to be versatile when going after a job. I did get many jobs because I could play the drums and sing at the same time. There was a whole slew of musicals out there that just called for actor musicians that could act, sing, and play instruments. And I got to work for about six years without, um, without any stop because there were a small group of people. Anything that you can do, they call it special skills. <laughs> and 
anything that you can do is always helpful. It adds to the full colors. So, and have fun, have fun. That's the number one. If a singer's voice is their instrument, how about the care and treatment of that instrument? Just as it takes training and practice to play the piano or violin, the voice must be developed. And it must be used properly to avoid damage. It's not just an instrument, but it is a delicate one. It has to be cared for, protected, and maintained. Vocal exercises are crucial, not just when starting out, but as part of a lifelong commitment. So you have to do a lot of things to take care of your instrument. And when I was younger, I had a lot of teachers talk about that. And I listened, but I sort of, <laughs> whatever, they're a little severe. But once you get out and you're really in the field and you're doing it every single night, <laughs> it's good to hear it because it all comes back. You have to drink a lot of fluids. I do um, scales, just like you learn in the rudimentary thing. Speaking is the same. Sometimes the speaking is harsher on your voice than the singing can be. So you have to really, you have to breathe deep and you have to project when you're speaking and use all your, you know, articulators. In the shadows when I come and see, in the shadows when I come and see, in the shadows, in the shadows, in the shadows. Although Marcy plays the star in 42nd Street, she explained that there's always the need for teamwork, especially in something as complex and big as a Broadway musical. There are interwoven responsibilities and the people who handle them must work together seamlessly. Oh my gosh, it is the word team is that's it. You you cannot do it alone. It's there's no if, ands, or buts, every piece in the, in the wheel is so important. Um, we have nights where we go to a new theater and the dressers change people's clothes and many times people do not make it out on stage because they have a new dresser that wasn't as fast. And so each piece, people hand you a prop and literally you can run sometimes, throw a coat on, <laughs> throw your coat on and someone puts your hat on and you grab the purse and if they weren't there you wouldn't have you know, if you don't have the prop to stick the letter in, sometimes the story changes. And the musicians, oh my gosh, when, when you go to one town, there will be a great trumpet player, and it literally lifts you up when you raise your arms and you hear that, and if, if they're not there the next night, you can feel the difference. So it's a completely a team effort. But if the lights don't come up, maybe lights are most important. <laughs> if the people cannot see you, you're done. <laughs> When you attend a performance of a show like 42nd Street, it may look like everyone on stage has been rehearsing and performing together for months. In fact, to be successful, it better look like that. But as Marcy tells us, there are some things that may surprise you. That's one of the tricky things, being a professional. If you're new, when I got this role, they'd been on the road for an entire year. I learned it all by myself. I had one day with the cast where I did it, and boom, that night I was in front of the people. So you actually, I say you're learning the role and even the singing of it, just the um, flow of being able to sing it every night and having the stamina, it sort of comes while you're in front of the people. So you have to let go of the fact that you're going to be perfect. You're never perfect. There is no such thing. Every night's a little different. And I just try to say I'm letting the people watch me work. If that means I'm, you know, no different than a sport player. There is no perfect game. Making it can mean different things to different performers. For some, it means stardom. For others, it's simply being able to make a living. There are many, many avenues out there. If you don't let people, um, or let yourself get too sad when you have disappointments along the way. Because it's, it's hard in school for teachers even to see your talents. They might see someone else's and give it to them first and it takes time. It does take time. And you want everything right away. But it, if you just keep going with your heart, it works out. <laughs> My mother wasn't right. You can be happy. You can make a living. <laughs> and um, it's, it's, it's good to uh, realize that, to be older and realize that. It's, it's not all scary. Or, and you don't have to be a star. That's a good thing. You can make a living and be happy, and you don't have to be a star. You can be if you want, if you're driven that way, but you can also have a nice life and, and uh, 
You don't have to be on extra, extra. <laughs> After talking with Marcy, we also met with some young singers. Even though they are just starting out, we found out a lot of things they had in common with Marcy. One of these was the reason why they sang. It's one of my best talents, I think, and I enjoy doing it. It's something that it lets me express myself. Another young singer, Andrew Voigt, talked about the sheer enjoyment of singing. If you're even relatively interested in music, I'd say at least explore the idea of joining up a group or making anything. I mean, I, I use the skills I learned in choir and musical and everything in like a band that I'm in. And Andrew is a talented singer. We asked him if he planned to pursue a career in music. How does singing and music fit into his life? I don't see myself as a professional singer, like bringing in all the money for my family as a professional singer, no. I think it's more of just a really neat hobby. I like being in front of people. I found out that I love being in front of people. Uh, that actually kind of affected what I want to do with living. I really was looking into being um, like an architecture, architectural kind of stuff, but I found out that that's more of like a behind a desk job with most of the stuff that you would do with architecture. And I want to be in front of people. I like doing that. I'm actually in a tech prep vocational type school for engineering, and I'm looking into civil engineering, but being more out in the field of a like talking to customers or talking to representatives. Kayleen sings in a chorus, and if the voice is the singer's instrument, then the choral singing is like being accompanied by the instruments of others. Put that chorus of instruments into a show with lights, costumes, and props, and you can see that teamwork isn't just a good thing. It's absolutely necessary. In other classes now, we're doing more things with teamwork and group work. And after being here and working in groups, it helps. Um, you learn different ways to interact with people. Um, also, the keep at it until you get it. Teamwork for like main productions and with a group, because it's not all you. You have to learn how to work with each other and different people, because every person has a part. And it's kind of like a machine. Without one thing, it falls apart. And we form a great family. Remember when Marcy talked about balancing the creative side with the promotional, ambitious side? Kayleen talked about her own personal balancing act. For me, grades come first, always, and Mom is quick to remind me of that all the time. Um, whenever, for me, I budget my time very, very strictly um, for rehearsal. Anytime I'm not on stage or am backstage, I'm always seen with the book in my hands, working, studying. After that's done, well, then we can do the stuff that we do off stage. <laughs> There's something magical about humans who can create beautiful sounds. Consider this. A child with no musical training or background can sing from the time they can talk. Some are born with natural ability, but we can all sing. We may not be especially good singers, and we may never be able to follow the path that Marcy took, but the enjoyment and joy that comes from singing is something we can all share. Unlike many talents in the performing arts, a singer doesn't absolutely need an orchestra or even an audience in order to perform. As the late great jazz singer Ella Fitzgerald put it, the only thing better than singing is more singing. Funding for this series was provided by the Northeastern Ohio Education Association. NEOEA members include elementary and secondary teachers, university professors, and support professionals working to provide great public schools for every child.